Hey, everybody, and welcome to Ask Dear Abby, a podcast where we uncover what ails our animal friends and offer some top-notch animal advice from our delightful doe, Abby. Well, thank you for that introduction. And of course, this all isn't possible without you, Hopper, our faithful showrunner. I figured we'd get started with some fun animal fast facts before we dive into today's episode. Sounds good to me. Well, Hop, for one, did you know that you can tell a turtle's gender by what sound they make? Boys grunt and girls hiss. Cool, but wouldn't it be cooler just to ask them? That's a good point. On another note, did you know that giant anteaters consume up to 35,000 ants and termites in a single day? Ants? They consume ants? I thought it was weird my Aunt Jean hadn't stopped by lately. (laughs) No, not aunt like your parent's sister, but ant like the tiny insect that lives in the ground. Oh, that makes sense. I thought it was weird they didn't go for uncles, too. (laughs) 35,000, huh? That's a lot of ants. It sure is. The giant anteaters use their long, sticky tongues to slurp up hundreds of ants per minute. But what's really cool is that they never destroy an ant nest. This way, the ants will be able to rebuild their numbers so that the anteater can return later and feed again. Sounds tantalizing, am I right? (laughs) Well, it's time for those bugs to ante up. Oh, hey, Abs. Yes, Hop? What does an anteater eat when he wants to eat something hot? I don't know. What? Fire ants. <laughs> Ooh, Hoppy, that joke was lit. Did I get it right this time? Nailed it. Well, Abs, I think it's time for the neighborhood news. Paula the park pigeon released an official statement today reminding all of the animals at the Hope Habitat Zoo and Aquarium to stop making faces at the human visitors. She said, and I quote, It's not their fault they look so silly, so stop making fun of them. That's a great point, Paula. I know I don't like it when people tap on my enclosure's glass, so it only makes sense that they wouldn't like it when we make faces at them. Yeah, thanks, Paula. Hey, Hopper, it's been a while since we've heard any news about Rodney the raccoon. Unfortunately, that's because there's not much to tell. The escaped convict, Rodney the Raccoon, is still driving away in a stolen police vehicle with his nemesis, Detective Barry the Bloodhound, in a hot pursuit. Together, the two of them are driving across the country, at least until Rodney can find a way to escape for good. Oh, dear. Stay safe, Rodney, and try to make good choices. Well, Abs, I think that does it for the neighborhood news. Oh, and look at that. We've got a couple of callers who'd like to hear some helpful news on their daily blues. Excellent. I love lending a helping hoof to those in need. So, who are we speaking to first? Our first caller is a praying mantis named Manny. He's having trouble telling the truth about his superpowers. Wait, that can't be right. Oh, the truth about that he doesn't have superpowers. Oh my. Hello, Manny. If you've got a problem, just stop on by and I'll say hi and ask Dear Abby. That's me. Uh, Hi, Abby. I wanted to know if you can help me. Uh, See. I was at Boy Scouts, and a bunch of us were sitting around a fire talking, and one of the other boys asked me if I'd tell him all about my superpowers. Oh, oh, tell me, please. Uh, Can you turn invisible? Fly? Uh, No, but that's not what I told them. I told them that I was super strong and could shoot lasers out of my eyes like Superman and that I could talk to ghosts. Uh, But now... I'm worried that they will want me to show them my powers, and I don't have any powers. That's a pickle, all right. Please, Abby, what do I do? Hmm. Well, Manny, I think first we may need to address the fact that you told your friends things that weren't true. That's called lying. Part of being a good friend is being honest, because lies can actually lead to your friends or even you getting feelings hurt. Do you see now how lying may not have been the nice thing to do? Yeah, I see what you mean. I do feel bad about lying. And look at all the stress the lies are giving me now. It's okay, Manny. The important thing is to learn from our mistakes. No one is perfect, and every day is an opportunity to learn and grow. Now that we've discussed honesty being the best policy, what if I told you, Manny, that you actually do have some powers? Wait, what? Get out of here. That's right. Praying mantises, like you, Manny, are really cool and could even be considered to have superpowers from a certain point of view. Let me start at the beginning. The word mantis comes from the ancient Greek word for prophet. A prophet is a holy person, someone who prays to their god a lot. Thus, we got the term praying mantis because mantises look like they are praying when they have their forelegs or arms up. 
Now, Manny, while you can't shoot laser beams out of your eyes, you can fly and you can even turn invisible after a fashion. Really? Yes. Praying mantises are really good at camouflage, which means that they look like their surroundings. Most mantises are green and look like leaves, while others are brown and can look like sticks. This allows them to avoid predators and to sneak up on their prey, which is essentially the same thing as turning invisible. You also have another cool ability, Manny. You can turn your head from side to side. Can everybody do that? True, but no other insects can. The praying mantis is the only insect that can turn its head from side to side, allowing them to see all around. But that's not all. You said that you told your friends that you can talk to ghosts? Well, the ancient Greeks thought the mantises would point the way home for lost travelers, while ancient Egyptians thought that they would show souls the way to the underworld. So, kind of like how you said you could talk to ghosts. Plus, the ancient Assyrians thought you could do even more cool stuff, like tell the future or bring the dead back to life. I did all that? <laughs> Not exactly, but you did inspire all of that. Humans have long realized how special praying mantises are, so they told stories about other cool things that they thought they could do. Does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah, I guess it does. So what do I do now, Abby? It may seem scary, Manny, but I think you need to tell your friends the truth. Uh, but what if they make fun of me? Like I said, telling the truth can be scary, but I think the main thing for you to focus on, Manny, is explaining what happened and why you made up superpowers for yourself. If they are truly your friends, they will be understanding and forgive you. Plus, I bet your friends will be excited to learn about all of the cool things that you can do. Thanks, Abby. I guess there's lots of cool things I can do. I feel ready to tell my friends the truth at the next Boy Scouts meeting. Bye! Aw, sweet kid. I've definitely been caught in a lie before, too. But like Manny, I learned from my mistakes. My mother was not a happy camper. Oh, no, Hop. What'd you do? Oh, uh, check that out. We've got another caller on the line. Wait, no. Looks like we've got two new callers. Janice and Jessica are two snakes who are having trouble sharing. Ooh, hi, Janice and Jessica. If you've got a problem, just stop on by and I'll say hi and ask. Dear Abby, that's me. Hello, Abby. Thank you for taking our call. We, like, totally need your help. What seems to be the problem, friends? So, we have the same body. We are literally two heads on the same snake body. You know how a snake's tongue is forked and it goes in different directions at the end? That's, That's what, what we, we look like. like. I'm picturing myself like that with my brother Flopper and, yeah, that does sound complicated. Yeah. We fight over everything. Food, clothes. She totally steals my sweater. Do not. Oh, dear. Ladies, there is no need to fight. But that's the problem. We're always fighting. It's exasperating. Yeah, super bummer. Wow. Well, ladies, I am certainly glad that you called in today. Let me ask you this. Did you know that the condition you have is called polycephaly? It means multiple heads in Greek. Yeah, it's all Greek to me. Wait, you mean there are other animals like us? There certainly are. In snakes alone, about one in every 100,000 live births results in polycephaly. Okay, I'm intrigued. It happens much the same way that conjoined twins are formed. A developing embryo begins to split into identical twins, but then stops part way. There's actually a pretty famous timber rattlesnake who was found in New Jersey with polycephaly. Scientists named him Double Dave. Dave sounds cute. Does he have a brother? He's just like us, Jessica. Of course he has a brother. Probably named Dave. Devil Dave is very special because, like you, he has two fully formed heads. And, just like you, Double Dave's heads often fight each other over food, not realizing that the food goes to the same place. This may not sound like much of a problem for Hopper and I, who can bite our food in half, but snakes have to swallow all of their meals whole. On another note, did you know that there are a lot of myths about double-headed snakes? Ancient human civilizations like the Aztecs have artwork that features two-headed snakes. But the most famous ones, at least to us, come from ancient Greece. The ancient Greeks believed in a creature called the Amphisbena, which was a snake with a head on each end of its body that would eat ants. Like Aunt Jean? No, Hoppy, the insect type of ant, remember? Another great example of a mythical snake with polycephaly is the Hydra. Hang on, I thought the Hydra was a dragon. 
That's a great point, Hoppy. Actually, the word dragon comes from the Greek word for snake. And in ancient paintings, like the kind found on vases, the hydra is depicted as a many-headed snake. O-M-G. You hear that, Janice? We're dragons. There are actually examples of animals with polycephaly in mythologies from all over the world. But enough about mythology. Let's talk about Janice and Jessica. Ladies, let me ask you the most important question. Do you love... Carrots. Um, no. Ladies, do you love each other? Absolutely. Duh. Jessica is my best friend. Not that I have a choice, but I like always when I hang out with my BFF Janice. Aw, thank you, Jessica. Okay, I'm glad that we've established that. We all have arguments sometimes with our family and friends, but it's important to remember that we love each other and are fortunate to have one another. Now, it may sound cliche, but sharing really is caring. With siblings, especially in your situation, we can become possessive of our belongings because we want to feel like our stuff is ours. But ladies, sharing is an extension of love and kindness. Treat your sister as you want her to treat you. If you both open your hearts up to sharing, I feel confident that your connection will only grow deeper. Okay, you've got a point, Abby. Janice? If you want to, I'll, like, let you wear the sweater this weekend, if you want to. You know what? We can both wear the sweater. You put your head through the neck, and I'll put mine through a sleeve or something. And then we'll switch next weekend. Or you could place an order for a custom-made two-headed sweater on our friend Madame Spinette's Bugsy Shop. Oh, yeah. I heard she started her own line of web-spun clothing. Just search Spinette Sweaters on the World Wide Web. Well, Janice and Jessica, this has certainly been a delight. Take care, and remember, sharing is caring. Thank you so much, Abby. We'll remember. I promise. Bye! That was really interesting, Abs. I guess when we put our two heads together, we can come up with some pretty good advice. Aw, you bet, Hobby. I'm really glad we got to help them out. Manny, Janice, and Jessica had to learn some very important lessons about being someone's friend. I'd like to remind our listeners at home about something important. Caring for someone doesn't just mean that we play with them or they hug us and cook for us. Sometimes it can be hard work being someone's friend. Manny learns the importance of being honest with his friends, while Janice and Jessica learns that sharing is an extension of love. Abby, you've inspired me. I have? Yeah. I want to share this milkshake with you. Aw, thanks, Hop. Wait a second. This is empty. And this is where I have to be honest. I already drank it. But what do you say we grab a new one to share during the commercial break? (laughs) I like it. We'll be back in a flash after these messages. The following testimonial is true. Hootie is a real animal client, not an actor sitting in a dark room with a microphone. It was horrible. I had terrible acne ever since I was a little owlet. But you just don't notice these things when you're hunting for mice. It wasn't until I went to the barn dance that all the barn owls started making fun of me. As you can imagine, it just made my head spin. Dr. the Blowfish here. Actually, I'm a sea bass, but that doesn't matter. What Mrs. Hootie has experienced is nothing new. Owls have a tendency for bad skin conditions. And for years, they have turned to Plumasek. At first, Plumasek worked perfectly. But then, whoo, I started molting. The horror. As a doctor, I see a lot of moltings. But nothing compares to a Plumasek molting, because a Plumasek molting don't quit. Plumasek has, in fact, been linked to premature moltings and birds of all feathers. And as we all know, birds without feathers don't stick together. Why? Because they're embarrassed. If you or a loved one has suffered premature molting from taking Plumasek, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Listen to this testimonial of Hootie and the Blowfish, and then call Sturgeon and Sturgeon, attorneys not surgeons, to get you the help you need today. You know, on this podcast, we have to do a lot of research to keep up with all these animal facts. That's right, Hobby. That's why we use the Mastiff Class Plus. For those of you who don't know, the Mastiff Class Plus is an online learning platform made by real filmmakers. I even heard that Steven Squealbird directed one. That's right, Abs. He did. And with a monthly membership to the Mastiff Class Plus, you get to see all kinds of documentaries on both human and animal facts, particularly Mastiffs. Mostly Mastiffs. In fact, it's all about Mastiffs at Mastiff Class Plus. My personal favorite is the Mastiffs of La Mancha. And mine is Mastiff and Commander, the real story behind Magellan the Mastiff. All of these and more are available to watch with a monthly membership to the Mastiff Class Plus. 
the Master of Class Plus. Learn with the big dogs. And we're back. And I hope y'all are still listening with those rabbit ears of yours. As some of you know, and for those of you who don't, this is the part of the show where we bring in some furry, flying, fantastic animal friends of ours to answer your animal inquiries. We've been asking all of you at home to send us your questions about a certain animal topic. Today's topic is cockroaches. Take it away, Hop. This week's question comes to us from Bethany. She wrote, Hi, Abby. My dad said that cockroaches can survive a nuclear blast. Is that true? Ooh, Bethany, thank you for that wonderful question. I think we are going to need to defer to an animal expert for this one. And hey, hubby, I'm pretty sure we've got a cockroach expert living at the Roach Motel exhibit at the Hope Habitat Zoo and Aquarium. Oh, yeah, Franz. Let's see if I can get him on the line. I've heard he's pretty hard to pin down. <laughs> Franz, you here? Look, I know why you're calling, and no, I did not eat your leftover pie from the counter. You have no proof, none. Whoa, whoa, Franz, hold up. We aren't calling you to give you a hard time. It's Abby and Hopper from Ask Dear Abby. You know, the podcast where we give advice. Oh, yeah. Guten Tag. <laughs> Please excuse me. I get so many spam calls. So we get. How are you two doing? <laughs> no apology necessary, Franz. Hoppy and I are doing wonderfully. Thank you so much for taking our call. I'm sorry to hear that you get so many unpleasant phone calls. Oh, danke, Fräulein Abby. It's not easy to be considered a pest by others. Everyone always assumes I am getting into their leftover food and making big messy. I am no pest. I am Franz, the German cockroach, loving husband and father to 16 beautiful babies. Wait, Franz, forgive me if I'm wrong, but don't cockroaches typically get into anything and everything with food? <gasps> Nein. I am no scavenger. I am Franz, the German cockroach, loving... Yeah, 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 we got that part. Uh, if I may interrupt, it's true that cockroaches are indeed scavengers, meaning that they'll eat just about anything, making garbage a primary source of food. However, that does not mean that all roaches are pests. In fact, a majority of roaches live in forests, happily oblivious to humans and their delicious leftovers. Ah, <laughs> uh, danke. I am not a pest. I am Franz, the German cockroach. Loving husband and father to 16 beautiful babies, yes. Thank you, Franz. And hey, while we're talking about it, Franz, did you know that your feeding can actually help the environment? Yeah, this is true. Most of us cockroaches feed on decaying organic matter, which traps a lot of nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Boys and girls, nitrogen is the most abundant element in our atmosphere, and it's crucial to life. Cockroach feeding has the effect of releasing nitrogen, which then gets into the soil and is used by plants. So, in reality, without cockroaches, our forests and all of the species that live in the forests would suffer. Wow, looks like you're pretty important to our earth, Franz. Hey, with Franz like these? <laughs> well, Franz, I'm glad that we were able to address the false pest assumptions. But now, we would love your help answering Bethany's question. So, Franz, let me ask you this. Is it true that cockroaches can survive a nuclear blast? <laughs> ah, this is a good question, Bethany. Did you know, Farline Abby, that I was a bit of a daredevil back in my day? Oh, really? I thought you were Franz the German cockroach, loving husband. And father to 16 beautiful babies. Ah, you remembered. How could I forget? But I am also Franz the daredevil. Oh, I was. That's interesting to hear, Franz, especially because cockroaches are notoriously resilient creatures. Roaches can hold their breath for around five to seven minutes. Females don't need males to reproduce, and roaches are capable of living headless for weeks on end. Roaches can also adapt or change their internal chemistry very quickly, making them resilient to chemicals that once would harm them. Yeah, this is exactly why I joined the roach riders in my youth. I love the thrill of trying daring stunts. Like this one time, we had a competition to see who could get in and out of the most houses in one night without being noticed by anyone. <laughs> I felt like I was unstoppable, on top of the world. But that was then. I don't do that anymore. I am not a pest. <laughs> it's okay, Franz, we know. That's interesting to hear you say that you were unstoppable rather than are unstoppable. Did something happen that did finally stop you? Ah, oh, this brings me to young Bethany's question. 
You see, I too heard the myth of cockroaches being able to survive a nuclear blast. And I thought, surely this is true, because cockroaches can survive anything. But I wanted to understand more. How exactly could that be possible? So I went to the Hope Habitat Library and study. Ooh, I love that place. I get all my linguistics books from there. Yeah, it's pretty great. I just went there for the first time the other day. Ruth wanted to pick up Don Key's new book on the keto diet. I think it was called The Keto Success, Dieting with Don or something. Oh, really? That sounds fun. So things must be going pretty well with you and Ruth. Uh, is it my turn to talk again? Oh, yes. My apologies. Um, So, Franz, what exactly did you learn at the library? Well, first, I learned how the myths began. You see, in the aftermath of the 1945 Hiroshima bomb, reports came back that cockroaches were the only thing to survive as they were seen roaming through the wobble. People took this as fact and the myth grew stronger and stronger over time. But more recently, scientists have done studies to seek out greater understanding. What they discovered is that, yes, Cockroaches can survive a huge amount of radiation, which is why so many survived the blast in 1945. However, sad as I am to say it, they also found out that cockroaches are not indestructible. Oh my, it certainly sounds like you're indestructible. Yeah, I mean, we are certainly impressive, but a nuclear blast isn't only radiation. It's also heat. What scientists uncovered is that the intensity of the heat from a nuclear blast could take out roaches instantly if exposed. So it's safe to say that any species of cockroach would not be able to survive a direct nuclear bomb blast. Though the radiation may not get them, the heat and impact would. I am sorry that I do not have more exciting news for Firelight Bethany. Aw, Franz, don't be distressed, friend. I personally am so glad that I finally know the truth regarding this myth about cockroaches, and it certainly doesn't make me any less impressed by you. I'm still fascinated that a roach can survive so much radiation. Ah, darn girl. Scientists think the reason we can withstand so much radiation may be because our cells divide more slowly than human cells which gives our bodies more time to fix the problems caused by radiation, like broken strands of DNA. It's no wonder for this reason that us roaches have been around for so long. Did you know that there are cockroach fossils dating back as far as 350 billion years? We actually predate some dinosaurs, yeah? <laughs> Franz, that's incredible. See, you have so many amazing traits that you can embrace that are true. Never doubt how amazing you are, my friend. Uncle Farline Abby, you certainly know how to make a roach feel better. <laughs> Thank you, Franz. It has been a delight having you on our show. Tell those 16 beautiful babies of yours that Hoppy and I say hi. Absolutely. Auf Wiedersehen, Abby und Hopper. Danke schön. Until next time. Thanks for debunking that myth for us, Franz. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> hey, Abby, what's black, white, and striped all over? Could it be our guests for next week's topic on striped animals? Whoa, are you some kind of mind reader? Quick, what am I thinking of right now? Carrot cake. It's always carrot cake. <laughs> it's not always... Okay, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week to get hype about stripes. You can go to www.askdearabby.com to submit your questions about striped animals. Well, that concludes our episode of Ask Dear Abby. But before we go, Abby would like to give you, the listeners, a few words of wisdom. Take it away, Abs. Thanks, Hobby. We sure did learn an awful lot today. In the spirit of our new friends, Manny, Janice, Jessica, and Franz, let me leave you all with this. We have all heard a myth or two that may or may not be true. Our friend Manny got caught in a lie about his supernatural powers and didn't know how to break the news to his friends. Rather than lying to our parents and peers, instead ask questions and research your special abilities. Nine times out of ten, these powers that you have are actually incredible attributes that you haven't discovered yet or know how to define. Another example of this was with our friends Janice and Jessica. They were struggling with sharing food, among other things things, not knowing that because they're joined together, everything they were sharing was going to the same place. Once they realized that, they were able to compromise instead of welling up with anger until they exploded. 
Speaking of explosions, our friend Franz helped clear up another myth about the survival rate of cockroaches when it comes to nuclear blasts. While they weren't the most successful daredevils in that regard, they have been able to survive and adapt to their environments for several years. In addition to surviving harsh environments, they also work hard to break down waste into a tasty treat. So, the next time you hear a myth from someone or read it in a book, make sure to fact check it and uncover the truth. Thanks again for listening, and as always, if you've got a problem, just stop on by and I'll say hi at Ask Dear Abby. Bye-bye now.